in the ancient land of Egypt where the Nile flowed like a silver serpent and the pyramids kissed, the sky the people believed in life beyond death. For the Egyptians, death was not the end. It was just the beginning of a great journey to the afterlife. But there was a catch. To live forever, the body had to be preserved. It had to be perfect. Because without a body, the soul, the car, and the bar could not recognize where to return. Thus began one of the most fascinating rituals in human history. Mummification? The origins of mummification long before embalming became an art, Egypt's dry desert did the work for them. Early Egyptians buried their dead in shallow pits in the sand. The heat and dryness naturally dried out the bodies, preserving them. People noticed something incredible. Even after years, the bodies were intact. So they began to imitate what nature did on its own intentionally drying out the dead to cheat time and decay. The science of death. By the time of the Old Kingdom, the Egyptians had transformed mummification into a sacred, intricate science. The process took 70 days. Here is how it unfolded. The washing of the body. The body was taken to a special embalming tent called the IBU, or the place of purification. It was washed with palm wine and Nile water. The washing symbolized the cleansing of the body, preparing it to receive the soul again. It was a critical step because the Egyptians believed that if any part of the body was unclean, the soul might be denied entry. Removal of organs, the brain was removed sometimes through the nose with a long hook. The heart, believed to house the soul, was usually left inside unless it was removed for judgment during the weighing of the heart ceremony. Other organs, liver, lungs, intestines, and stomach were taken out and placed into canopic jars, each guarded by a protective guard. The removal of organs was a delicate process. Every step was imbued with symbolic meaning. For example, the liver, associated with healing, was placed in a jar guarded by the goddess of healing. Drying with natron, the body was packed and covered with natron, a natural salt found in the Egyptian desert. It absorbed moisture from the body, which stayed that way for 40 days to draw out moisture. This was the longest, and perhaps the most crucial phase of the entire process. The natron encasing was meant to dehydrate the body, removing all traces of moisture, which was believed to be the essence of what made a body decay. It was so critical that the longer the body stayed in natron, the better. Sometimes the dead were kept in these salt mines for up to 100 days, wrapping the body once dried. The body was coated with oils and resins, stuffed with linen, and wrapped in hundreds of yards of linen bandages. Amulets were placed between layers to protect the dead. The wrapping of the body was not only a way to preserve the physical form, but also to bind the soul back into the body. Each layer, each bandage, was a prayer, a charm, a whisper of protection. The final touch a mask, often made of painted wood or gold, was placed over the face. Then the body was sealed in one or more coffins, and finally in a sarcophagus. The entire process was a dance of life and death, science and spirituality. For the Egyptians, the body was not just a vessel that housed the soul while alive, but it was the soul in its physical form. The curse of the tomb. The Egyptians weren't naive. They feared tomb robbers. So they protected their graves with curses carved into stone. Some read, death shall come on swift wings to him who disturbs the king's rest. When Howard Carter discovered Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922, the world was shocked by how intact it was. But soon after, Lord Carnarvon, his sponsor, died mysteriously. Rumors of a mummy's curse swept across newspapers. Was it a myth, a coincidence, or something darker? The afterlife awaits. Mummification was never just about the body. It was part of a much bigger story. The journey through the afterlife. According to Egyptian belief, 
The dead had to pass a series of trials in the duet. The underworld, the most famous, the weighing of the heart. The heart was weighed against the feather of mat. If it was light, the soul could enter paradise. If it was heavy with sin, it was devoured by Amet. The soliting monster, mummies were buried with books of the dead scrolls of spells to guide and protect them on this perilous journey. Mummies beyond Egypt, though Egypt perfected it, mummification wasn't exclusive to them. The Inca of South America mummified their kings and carried them to festivals. The Chinchoro people of Chile practiced it 2,000 years before the Egyptians. Even nature creates mummies like the bog bodders of Northern Europe, but none match the spiritual depth and grandeur of the Egyptian ritual. Modern mummies, an eternal fascination today. Mummies lie in museums around the world. Some have even been CT scanned, DNA tested, and digitally unwrapped. We've discovered the secrets of their health, diets, and diseases. Yet despite all the science, mummies continue to mystify us. Why? Because in their rapt silence, they whisper a truth. We all feel the desire to be remembered, to leave something behind, to not let the story end with death. Echoes of the immortals, the mummies of ancient Egypt weren't monsters or myths. They were people rulers, workers, children, priests, each one carefully preserved with love, fear, and hope. They believed that through mummification, they would live forever, and in a way, they were right. Now, check out Ancient Egypt's Greatest Secrets. Decoding hieroglyphics? What did they really look like? If you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment what you think, and subscribe.